you can't not incorporate technology in education today. Like you just have to uh, embrace it and figure out how you can get it into your, your curriculum. Welcome to another episode of the Proud to be LBUSD podcast. I'm your host, Michelle, and today our guest is Thomas McNamee, who is our AP Computer Science Principal Teacher at Lakewood High School. He was recently recognized be for being Teacher of the Year. Congrats, and thank, thank you so much for being here. No problem. So why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Um, so like you said, I'm a teacher at Lakewood High School. I actually was a student at Lakewood High School. Um, so my mom graduated from there. I'm there now. My daughter's there now, mm -hmm. and my son will be there. Uh, so I've this is my 30th year at Lakewood as a student or teacher or coach. So I've been there a long time. Oh, that's good. It's like alumni. You have yep. people following. It's amazing. Um, I kind of wanted to ask, how. so how was the process of getting recognized for being Teacher of the Year? It was surprising. Uh, at, at first, I didn't really want to even do it, um, but I had a, several colleagues who nominated me and kind of shamed me into going through the process. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is a long process. There's a lot of essay writing, uh, resume writing. I looked at it as kind of an opportunity to do some reflection because I'm about halfway through my, my teaching career. So I use it as a reflective piece, really not ever thinking that I was going to get it. Um, so I was, I was very surprised. Mm -hmm. And how was your reaction finding out? Um, like I said, I was, I was surprised. Mm -hmm. It was uh, obviously rewarding to know that you, know, you get recognized for uh, the hard work. Um, in my speech uh, at the board meeting, um, I was really kind of trying to touch on a lot of teachers will never get this recognition. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that, you know, I use my time as teacher of the year to kind of keep mentioning that and letting other teachers know that, you know, they don't go unseen. Like I know how much hard work it is and, mm -hmm. you know, they may never get that that recognition. That's important because I feel like in a way you kind you're an example for other teachers, like the pro you went through a, a long process, but it came with a reward. Yeah. And it must have been amazing finding out. Was it over call, like email? I was through an email. It was actually like the week before spring break last oh, year. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I had to keep it a secret for, what is that, like six months? Oh, shoot. Um, it was nice that we had just, we were, we already had plans to go to Disney World for spring break. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a, a celebration trip, um, like once I found out the week before. And I know you were talking a little bit about um, how you used to work for Disney. So how was it like to be back? Um, I mean, my <laughs> wife still works there, so mm -hmm. I go back often. Uh, I can appreciate it now as a, as a guest. She doesn't still because she works there. Mm -hmm. um, there's things that I miss, there's things that I don't miss, but I definitely brought a lot of that, uh, what I learned from there into what I do in the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, I worked for Disney for about eight years, nine years beforehand. And so a lot of my stories lead with, well, when I was at Disney, and mm -hmm. sometimes the kids like it, sometimes they, oh God, here we go again. <laughs> does that kind of tie into your background in technology and computer science? Um, it does, and it doesn't. Um, so... You know, working for Disney, I got to do lots of different things. Uh, I worked from kind of the, the starting position all the way up. Mm -hmm. And so I ended uh, as a manager. Um, but my main focus was training at that time. So I wrote a lot of curriculum. Um, I trained the trainers. I was a mentor to uh, people who wanted to become a manager. Mm -hmm. So that's where a lot of the background of wanting to be a teacher came from. Uh, getting to work with all kinds of different industry um, industries at Disney mm -hmm. obviously kind of allowed me to see different technologies being used. But I never really was a, you know, go and study technology, just kind of, mm -hmm. I was always interested in it. Um, I kind of grew up in a generation, we're called the Exennials. <laughs> um, there's a very specific six-year gap of, if you were born in from 77 to 83, uh, we don't associate as Gen X or Millennials. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really because the internet blew up while we were at high school. Mm -hmm. So we know a world of before digital and after digital. And I think it's just being born into that generation and kind of seeing technology develop that it just made me always want to do it. And I just kind of played with it on the side. And when I had the opportunity to, you know, bring it into my classroom and, and keep going, that's kind of what did it. So would you say that's kind of like what made you to pursue technology specifically? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then 
very specifically, uh, I was the lead teacher at ATM at the time. I had gone around to different companies, local companies, and asking them, you know, what do students need to know? At the time, ATM was very traditional engineering. You know, we taught electronics, we taught architecture. And those companies were saying that there was a big shift going into the digital world that students needed to know computer science. They mm -hmm. needed to know design. And so I taught myself coding. I went out and I did a, a AP boot camp to learn how to code. I was the only teacher. Um, there were 50 people there. 49 of them were math teachers. Mm -hmm. I was the only non-math teacher because my background is in English. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of teaching myself what I knew that the students needed to know um, and then kind of adjusting our program to meet the demands for the day. So since you were kind of talking about being an English major and in tr kind of transferring to technology, how was like the shift of that? Um, it was weird. I mean, obviously, <laughs> like it's like being the only math teacher, they mm -hmm. all kind of looked at me like I didn't know what I was doing. But because I was, you know, had that English background, I mm -hmm. looked at things through a grammar perspective. So I was able to troubleshoot code faster than they could. Uh, they can write code faster, but I was able to kind of figure out what was wrong mm -hmm. with it faster. And I tell my students that all the time, like, just because you learn one thing doesn't mean that you can't do the other thing. Mm -hmm. And I think English sometimes gets a, you know, a bad rap that, mm -hmm. oh, you're only going to be an English teacher, or you're only going to do this, but it's communication. It's being able to uh, take an idea and articulate it. Um, you know, in engineering, sometimes that's difficult because engineers are really good at solving a problem, mm -hmm. but maybe they don't understand it understand or it, it or be able to tell other people mm -hmm. about it so it's it's important to have that that go together mm -hmm. that's good because i mean i thought like coding was all about like tech like computers well computers and like science and math but now i know that it kind of ties into english and it helps a lot because you understand it better and like explain it and it's kind of going a little bit off but i know that you've been very involved both inside and outside of lakewood um so of the classroom <laughs> so can you tell me more about uh, ways in which you were involved in Lakewood in the high school? So, uh, like I said, this is my this is my 26th year mm -hmm. as a tennis coach at Lakewood. So right after I graduated, I started coaching. Um, and I coached all through college before I got the teaching job. So that's obviously number one. Mm -hmm. um, I've been club uh, facilitators for tons of different clubs. I have the Disney Club. I have, you know, various clubs I've done over those, you know, 18 years as teaching. Um, I've done a lot of work with uh, dual enrollment, even before dual enrollment became kind of a, a hot okay. button. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were doing it 10 years ago with LBCC. I do a lot as the CTE department head. Um, I think that's probably where I spend a lot of the time outside the classroom, looking at uh, companies and going and doing kind of externships, like going mm -hmm. and seeing what a day looks like so that I can bring that stuff back to the students. Um, I'm in a lot of committees at work. I'm the tech coordinator. Uh, you know, when COVID hit, I was one of the trainers that trained the teachers on how to use Canvas. Mm -hmm. So pretty much I'm, if something is happening, I'm probably doing something yeah. with it. You seem like you have a very busy day. I do. I wear a lot of hats, mm -hmm. but I, that's kind of how I, I survive. Like when I don't have anything to do, mm -hmm. when it's one thing, I think I kind of start to struggle. Mm -hmm. I, li I like to I like to be busy. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's good because it takes your mind off things. And what kind of what is like more of your role in the CT department? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I'm the department chair um, for our school. Mm -hmm. And the CT is all the career tech classes. So each pathway has their sequence of classes. Uh, this is my eighth year as the department chair. And I think that's where a lot of my work kind of goes around. Because I, I think sometimes they're not really the same across sequences. And so it's important to me that if you're a student in one pathway, you're still getting the same thing in a different pathway. Um, you, you may be getting different career classes, mm -hmm. but you should still be getting the same talk and opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and that's important. Um, we wrote a lot of our own classes at Lakewood. So I've done a lot of, of curriculum writing, specifically because we wanted to be able to have the freedom to teach what we felt was Important. what the students needed mm -hmm. to know. And so I do a lot of work with that. Um, being in CT, we get a lot of funding, a lot of grant writing, a lot of uh, trying to figure out big picture where we want to be in five years and then, you know, getting us the capacity mm -hmm. and the, the logistics to get there.
So kind of, how was kind of like the planning process? Because I feel like it must have been hard since you didn't have something to kind of like base it on or start off. Well, that's my time at Disney helps mm-hmm. me with that. Um, <laughs> you know, I when I worked at Disney, I was managing a multi-million dollar budget and mm-hmm. we were making millions of dollars a day. So um, that part is is the easy part for mm-hmm. me. Um, I think. For, for other teachers, it's a little bit different because they don't have that background in the real world necessarily. And so that was hard when I first started teaching, um, to be honest. I was like bored. I know that sounds bad. <laughs> but coming mm-hmm. from working at Disney and then having mm-hmm. all of that, that capacity of work that you're doing. And then I just, like I said, I found different avenues in education mm-hmm. to be able to kind of utilize those mm-hmm. things. You're branching now in a way. And then you're also getting to experience the different fields. So when someone needs help, like you were a Canvas, one of the, I know that was really important because a lot of teachers even still now don't know how to use Canvas or trying to figure it out. So they're like, oh, they call you in to help. Yeah. And I know you were talking about planning um, the classes. So in your opinion, what role does technology play in education today? And how do you integrate it into your teaching? So technology can be like the greatest thing or the biggest evil. Mm-hmm. You know, it depends on, on how you want to look at it. There's a book that I teach, uh, and it's about social media. And there's this metaphor of, does a fish know that it's wet? And I always have this conversation with my students, and they argue, oh, yeah, of course the fish knows it's wet. And it's mm-hmm. like, well, how? Um, and then they finally understand that the metaphor is them, that mm-hmm. students have always been born into this world of the smartphone. Mm-hmm. They, they have instant anything. And so... You can't not incorporate technology in education today. Like you just have to uh, embrace it and figure out how you can get it into your your curriculum. Um, Allow students to use stuff. I allow my students to use their phone. You know, when they ask me a question, I normally will say, well, Google it. Like Mm -hmm. (laughs) you have the answer Mm -hmm. in your pocket. Um, Some ways that I incorporate technology specifically, you know, because I'm a product design teacher, we do a lot of CAD work um, along uh, that goes to the 3D printers. Uh, we do some uh, object-oriented programming, um, some basic animation. Um, so that's a lot of the, the work there. I just got a grant last year uh, for uh, virtual reality goggles. We're Ooh, the first school mm-hmm. to get a class set of these virtual goggles mm-hmm. that we just finished training last week, and they're pretty cool. Um, and it's going to allow students to obviously, you know, go into VR. Mm-hmm. But for my class specifically, that animation that they make, they're now going to be able to enter into the animation and really kind of navigate through it and, and look at their work in a different way mm-hmm. and be able to say, oh, maybe I should have you know, moved it this way because mm-hmm. now I see that that doesn't really belong where I put it. So kind of how are like the virtual goggles? Like how do the students use it? Well, they haven't used them yet. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, the teachers, we just got trained and we are very excited uh, we're already fighting over who gets to have them and when. <laughs> mm-hmm. But essentially, it's like you're wherever you want to be. Like, mm. there's tons and tons of things. Uh, you can upload your own content. So, like, our um, our, our film students are going to probably plan on making some content that they'll be able to then upload and, and mm-hmm. go into. Um, our health field is going to be able to use it in terms of, you know, doing virtual dissections of, of kinds and things like that. Um, our our Odyssey program, our ocean program, they're going to be able to do, you know, snorkeling in the classroom. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that, that's something that I've, I've wanted for about five years. I looked at that company. I I kind of seeked it out. I wrote the grant, like I got it all done. Mm -hmm. And so now we're really excited to be able to, to use it. And it's also good because other pathways get to use it. And it's like, it's like in different ways. It's not just all about like, like tech. It can also be like snorkeling. That must be fun. Because I don't think you get to do that as like a, as a field trip. We get to do it in class with your friends. Yep. Mm-hmm. What, what would you say is like your greatest accomplishment? One great accomplishment was, you know, during COVID, you know, not a great time, but it was a time where I was able to help a lot of people. Um, my, when I did my master's work, my thesis was on how to utilize the platform Canvas mm-hmm. to increase student engagement. That was in 2010 when Canvas was like this brand new thing that no one knew. And so... I remember during COVID, I had made some videos to help my school. Those videos went to other schools, and I'd be up at 8, 9 o'clock at night every night with elementary school teachers that I didn't know that would say, hey, can you 
walk through this with me. And so that was rewarding to mm -hmm. be able to help all those teachers. Um, the biggest one probably though was last year. Uh, I, I kind of planned a career day for our school. It was our first school-wide career day. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to do that for 10 years and I kind of got tired of waiting. So I just kind of planned it all by myself and recruited some people to help me. And then um, we had over 50 different speakers. We had various financial classes that we taught that day. We had the big career fair at the end. And it was nice because I knew that every student got the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like they all got to go see keynote speakers. They all got to do the same workshops. Uh, it's really important that they all got to do mm -hmm. it because a lot of times those career days, it's a very you know select few students yeah. who get to do it. It's not really school-wide. Mm -hmm. So that was definitely probably like the the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's good because I know like for some career days, it's focused on grade level and not all students got to see it. Because I know when you're maybe like a freshman and now especially with pathways, you go into this pathway and you're like, oh, I want to get in this career. But then if like in career, career like choice fairs or career fairs, students get to see other like other careers and how they work. Mm -hmm. And I know we kind of talked about this like um the roles in technology play today. And since you've been a teacher for 18 years, have you seen like the difference of the kids now and the kids that didn't grow with technology? Oh, 1000%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you so can see, mm -hmm. yeah. What can, what can you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, obviously attention span is mm -hmm. the first thing. Um, and it's no shocker that, you know, their attention span is a little bit different because they have constant entertainment, constant uh, information. Mm -hmm. I think that that's the hardest part of teaching is knowing that you're not the person who knows everything in the room. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a shift that has been happening the last five to 10 years. And you know, when I first started teaching, it was still the, I know everything. Mm -hmm. And the students have to listen to you because they can't get that information mm -hmm. anywhere else. And now it's, I'm, I'm no smarter than you. <laughs> like mm -hmm. you can look up the same stuff. So now my job has become more of a facilitator mm -hmm. and really kind of as a guide and kind of getting them to to not only access the information, but be able to understand it, mm -hmm. you know, to see if it's legitimate, to see what they can do with it. Um, I think a lot of times it's it's too easy to say, yeah, I, I can get that. And then it's hard to want to learn it because you already know that you can find it mm -hmm. at any point. So you just have to not trick students into mm -hmm. to wanting to do it, but you got to make it a little bit more interesting. Engaging, to, yeah. yeah. Um, and from your class, what do you hope your students take away is like just from being there? So, I mean, forever, I've always kind of done three things that I want my students to, to do well in. And I, I try to build character, confidence, and creativity. Uh, so I hope that when they leave, they've gotten better in all three of those things that they're not afraid to try to do something different. I think a lot of times in education, we don't do the best in terms of letting students fail. Mm -hmm. uh, but failing is really important, um, especially in like a career tech class. In, in the real world, you're doing something every day for a year and you're constantly messing up. Mm -hmm. And it's like one day you finally get it. Whereas in education, a lot of times the expectation is you should get it right the first time. Mm -hmm. And if you do, that means you didn't learn anything. So I think allowing students to fail, and I tell them at the first day of school, I said, guys, you're going to fail. And we're going to be so excited when mm -hmm. you fail. And they all look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But then it becomes like a mantra. Like they, they want to struggle. Um, and so hopefully they leave confident in knowing that it's okay to mess up. And then that you learn something from that. And then, you know, hopefully you do better the second time. And I really appreciate you saying that and like complimenting it because I feel like when students walk into a class, all they're focused on is like grades, grades. And I need to get an A in this class to get this GPA to get into this college. But when you say that, it gives them like a sense of like feeling like, oh, I failed, but I'm going to learn from this. And it's, it isn't a bad thing because I feel like a lot of students take failure as a bad thing, but it's actually a good thing because you're learning from it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as a teacher, what would you say is your biggest goal? My biggest goal is to not be the teacher, um, <laughs> mm -hmm. which sounds weird, but like I'm, I'm in a unique class that I can do that. Like, and I tell them I'm your boss in this class. Like I'm not your teacher. And at some point we're going to become peers because if you're working for me in mm -hmm. this class, 
then I'm going to have expectations and, and hopefully you live up to those. Um, working at Disney, you know, I went through emerging leader, uh, you know, management classes. And I still fondly remember we had this uh, ex like military guy who was teaching a class about leadership. And mm-hmm. he said his job is to teach him, get him there and then get the hell out of the way. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that's something that I've just lived with. You know, working at Disney, that was my job was to get people ready, get them to where they need to be and then let them do it. Mm-hmm. And it, that's hard to do with students. A lot of teachers, they want to be, you know, right there and they want to make sure that, you know, they're doing every little thing. Um, but again, it's going back to you got to let them fail. Like, mm-hmm. And you have to let them, you have to build the environment that's safe enough to fail where they know, okay, I messed up, but I'm going to have another chance to to fix it. So that's my goal is that things would be happening in the room even if I wasn't in there Mm -hmm. because they just know what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And um, do you have any advice for teachers or students? Uh, For students, um, your teachers work hard. Uh, We we (laughs) Mm -hmm. Actually, we just had a meeting yesterday where one of the teachers kind of brought this up Mm -hmm. um, where students don't realize how hard I think teachers actually are working and, you know, the the student always is thinking, okay, well, it's me and I have six or seven teachers, mm-hmm. but they don't see the flip side that the teacher has like 170 students. And so it's, it's a little bit more difficult to kind of have mm-hmm. that one-on-one constantly. So I think the biggest advice for students is, you know, you need to be your own champion as mm-hmm. a student. And that means that you need to take ownership over stuff. And if something's not working, then you go talk to the teacher. Mm-hmm. You don't wait for the teacher to come talk to you. Mm-hmm. And to fix it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the biggest advice for teachers is just to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think, um, you know, our job's hard and our, our job gets harder every year. Um, but just kind of building an environment that it's okay to let more of the control go to students. Mm-hmm. And I know that's really hard for a lot of teachers. And it's hard in certain curriculums mm-hmm. to be able to just say, okay, I'm going to release some of this to the students but I, I think with technology and with, um, you know, the students that we have today, they need that. Like mm-hmm. Students need to have to kind of grapple with it more on their own. Mm-hmm. And the teachers have to be OK with kind of giving them that opportunity. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's good because um, we get to kind of work with our teachers and we get to learn stuff from each other. It's not just like teacher I'm learning, but also they learn something from us. Mm-hmm. And also, I agree with the with the student advice because I feel like nowadays we don't really appreciate our teachers as much. Now that we have, like, the internet, we're like, oh, we'll just Google this. Like, I don't need to learn it. But they, like, do hours of lesson plans and, like, building, like, pathways, the classes and everything. And, well, at that note, this is – those were all the questions I had for you. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, no problem. And that's it. Right. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm.